Hello and welcome to Call Off Cthulhu. I am your keeper of arcane law, and joining me for this one shot is Kresh. Hello. A bit delayed, but okay, we'll take it. Uh, I wasn't sure if you were doing the whole. <laughs> no, I'll. You can explain your characters in a bit. Safety socks. Hello. And Doxy. Hello. I'm just saying Doxy because I can't say your full name. What Doxilla mean? Yeah, I thought I'd, I'd, I'd probably say it wrong. I mean, I think I purposely did it wrong. It's okay. <laughs> right. Anyway, so this is Call of Cthulhu. It is a role playing game, but you probably already know that if you've come here to find it, unless you've come because you like watching me and Taylor fail miserably at board games every week. <laughs> so, um, do you guys want to start us off by telling us a bit about your characters? We can start off with Kresh. Sure. Uh, okay. My character is Edna. Edna Gore. Um, <clears throat> she is a um, elegant, uh, an older lady for the time. Um, has a a history of black and white films uh and you know photo shoots and s such and such she is a very charming lady so that will be um hard for me to pull off and she has had zero encounters with strange entities so far okay um and taylor do you or Socks. I'll call you Taylor. People know you as Taylor from the board game channel. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I'll just read my story. It makes life easier. Yeah. Um, so, a professor by day, an inquisitive spirit hunter by night. Uh, when I was but a boy, I could sense there was more beyond the mortal plane after losing my parents in a tragic fire. I forever had a feeling that they were always around me, yet I could never see them. Some say it was boyhood superstition, Others declare I simply never got over my loss at such a young age. I believe there's more. I know there's more. I can hear them. The voices of my parents guiding me through my troubles and tribulations as I grew and matured. I dedicated myself to the natural world and the occult world, trying to trying all I can to further understand the unease I've felt since they perished. Ultimately, I found myself lecturing in hopes of deepening my understanding of the supernatural. Oh, that is Mr. Charles. Um, and then Doxy, finally. Uh, I'm Dolores. Uh, I'm an American immigrant. Uh, my family run uh, a pharmacy back in America. And I guess while I was abroad, I, I met someone who was fine and I settled down with him, who coincidentally was also in ph pharmaceuticals. So we run a pharmacy shop together. And uh, she has repeated interactions with entities looking back at her at night and she's in active denial okay there you go right so our our story will begin um with you three arriving at the hotel nomad it's a grand hotel in the middle of london near the thames it's in whitehall um so as you come in there's a nice wooden desk uh with two young gentlemen stood behind it. You've got marble floor and a big marble archway that leads into a dining room just to the right side as you get in. You have two big security guards, um, heavy set, that are just stood guarding the dining room door. Um, so as you approach the front desk, you uh, one of the young men turns around, you see like a name badge on him, it says Pierre. Um, and he is just there, uh, he stood there and he's like, uh, bonjour. Welcome to the Hotel Nomad. Uh, are you here with uh, the blessing of Sir Richard? Um, and then, so you guys can hand over your key, your uh, invitations to this meeting that you've got. Um, and he just stands there and he goes, uh, Forgive me, um, we have extra security here to this evening. Um, obviously, Sir Richard is... Uh, quite popular and with uh, the events of the war just behind us um, we need extra care this evening so 
one of these gentlemen will take your bags and make sure there is no weapons, and the other one will have to pat you down before we send you through into the dining hall. Um, so, anyone wanting to say anything here? Oh, I didn't expect a, a pat down so soon. Um, what is the... Um, I understand uh, Richard is a, a well-established fellow. Um, I, I must in inquire... We live in an established society. I'm I'm curious as to if there's any um any rumor of um any happenings tonight. Otherwise, well, I don't believe there'd be such a need for us for the extra security. Uh, so he so, he sort of looks sort of shocked. He's he's nervous. He is only young. He's probably about seventeen. This kid, and he's just like uh, 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 begging begging your pardon, sir. I I did not mean to cause offence. It's just with. Uh, Sir Richard here and the his business partner. Uh, we just needed to make extra checks. It is, it is his request, uh, not ours. Uh, forgive me, but um, I we need the security to pat you down, or we uh, cannot send you through. Oh well, uh, I don't mind that. Just make sure you're delicate with my my weatherproof cloak here. It's quite fancy, you see. So. Uh, this, uh, the big gentleman comes over, takes your suitcase or your bag that you've got for the evening and um, starts rummaging through it on the, behind the counter. Uh, and the other one just there comes and he spreads your arms out and starts patting you down. Um, do you have anything sort of on you at this point that you wouldn't want to be found? Uh, no, not really. No, nope. okay, so no rolls needed. He's just going to pat you down. He doesn't find anything that's uh, dangerous or concealed on you. And he, uh, he gestures that you can go through into the dining room. Um, and then the security guard sort of turns around. Uh, uh, excuse me, ma'am. Um, and he points towards Edna. Uh, please step up. You're next. Uh, so If I must. So, obviously... He's, uh, he sort of explains to you that he's going to pat you down. He's not going to touch you inappropriately. Um, he's just going to use the back of his hand, palms down, make sure there's nothing on you. And again, he, he gestures that you can go in. They've taken your bag off you, and they leave it behind the till, uh, behind the counter. Um, right. And at this point, yeah, sort of just goes, uh, don't worry about your bags. Uh, we will bring them to your rooms. And he uh, hands each of you a key at this point, I should add. So you've each got your own room key that he has uh, given you. Um, and you see the other young gentleman stood there and he's trying to like lift these bags. He's a bit older, he's about 21, and he's just going to take the bags off and he runs out with them and takes them up towards your rooms. And the uh, same happens, Dolores. Uh, security guard comes, pats you down, and sends you in. Um, so you all go into this uh, dining room. It's got a big bay window that's uh, overviewing the Thames. And you've got several wooden desks, uh, benches along a bar. Um, there's butlers walking around everywhere. And there's a, a there's an older butler that's there. Um, he's got grey hair. He's um, 30s to 40s, really dark eyes, bags under his eyes like he's been up for a few days preparing for this. And uh, he just walks over and he's a uh, greetings um, to you all, esteemed guests. Uh, finally, you're here. Um, the rest of the party is already waiting for you. Um, please uh, get a drink from the bar. It's all on the house this evening and uh, take a seat. Uh, Sir Richard will be down soon. Uh, I am George, by the way. And he, um, he just gestures that you can go in. So at the, uh, at the bar, there is a, a lady that sat there and she's just sort of like, quite sad she's um hunched over she's looking quite down like almost so sobbing sort of um as she's got a little drink in her hand um and then over in the uh looking out the window there is a much older uh general he's from the war you can tell that by his uniform he's just stood looking out over the thames he's got a cane under one hand and a drink in the other um and yeah, so it's it's still lit dimly. It's got candlelight going through it. It's not anything too extravagant. And then there's two girls that are just stood sort of in the on next to the bar on a makeshift stage that they've got set up. Um, and you can sort of mingle. 
and you're talking amongst yourselves um, at this point. Um, I'll probably uh, make my way to the bar, grab myself like a, a nice bourbon um, just to ease into the evening. I'll uh, strike conversation with the um, lady sobbing at the bar. Um, uh, excuse me, my dear. Um, I, I can't help but in- inquire. It seems like quite a marvellous night, but you're in quite a foul mood, if I may um, assume. Um, is there any reason for this? I thought it'd be a, a nice evening to enjoy. So, uh, yeah, she looks up at you and she sort of, she has got tears that are coming down her eyes and she's uh, she's sort of like, <laughs> it's it's just this evening. It's, um, I was betrothed to Mr. Richard's son. Um, he died in the war and that's his photo up there behind the bar. And it's just, it's hard to see him at this time. And she sort of keeps crying. Um, and she keeps taking this drink, but her hands are visibly like shaken at this point. And she's, uh, she's, she's there, but she's constantly sort of drifting her eyes past you back to this painting that's on the wall that she just sees of the, uh, of uh, Sir Richard's son. Um, and then she sort of she goes, how, "How long have you known Sir Richard?" Um, good question. How long have I known Sir Richard? You can say for years if you like. You've you've known him for quite a while. He is he's a he's a very good friend of all of you, so it's probably been quite a few years that you've known him. But you remind won't... me, what, like what Sir, Sir Richard is? Is he like the current prime minister? Is he just the hotel owner? He's or... the hotel owner and your your friend and host for the evening. He's a uh, he's quite a well off man, but he's got a uh, a fair few enemies amongst him. But he came into some money and he's built this uh, nice hotel in the middle of London. Um. Okay. Um, I'll uh, I'll start off with um. Oh, I, I'm terribly sorry. We we all uh, faced some tragedies in the war. Um, it was actually in the war that I met Sir Richard. Um, we we served together. Um, for for a time. Um, at the Battle of the Bulge, it was quite a hard fought battle. But he's a noble man. And he has powerful connections and has managed to establish himself quite firmly in the in the in the town since we've returned. Um. I I I must say I'm certainly looking forward to this evening's um events and um seeing what will unfold. Yeah, okay. Um will you see this? Uh Oh, am I making the yeah, first roll? Yeah, you can, I think you should make a a spot spot hidden on this one, I think. Spot hidden. So, I uh I'll do a roll for that. Let's roll uh, it's all a D100 in this for you guys, but it's whatever your spot hidden is. So I believe yours, I've got it up here. So I've got 70. I think you should be all right then. Yeah, you've you've done a hard... So any, anything below yeah. 70? So in, in Call of Cthulhu, anything below, you want you don't want to go higher than yours, right. unless, it's, uh, unless it's for an insanity check, but we'll explain yeah, that should it come up. So um, yeah, as you... You're talking and you keep seeing that her eyes are drifting up to this photo, but then you notice that there's a, a a clear indent on her finger where rings used to be. And all up her arm is, it's just behind the where the wedding ring would be on her left hand. It's um, sort of gone like a, a grey sort of black colour, but she's she's very young, so but she's clearly got something else wrong with her. Um and it's sort of it disappears up her sleeve and all the way you can tell that it's going all the way around her arm from where the way she sat and she sort of sees that you've seen it and she just sort of stuffs a hanky just up her sleeve as she's um taking this drink is it sort of like a, like a bruise or is it more like a stain or is it like a discoloration of the skin it's it's discoloration of the skin almost like a almost like an infection you're not quite sure what it is but it is it's not it's not quite it's not quite a debilitate like a debilitating thing that she's got. She can clearly use her hand, but it is something that's like attacking her and creeping onto her hand, like something that's been growing there for a while. Okay, um, if that's the case, in uh, in in slightly more hushed tones, I'll say, um, I can't help but notice you have uh, potentially an issue where your where your uh, wedding band was. 
I recommend seeing a, um, a a general practitioner. Maybe he can get that looked into for you. I may have a connection or two. Um, she sort of like pulls her sleeve back down and she sort of starts sobbing a bit more, uh, a bit more heavy. But she she turns to me and she goes, "No, no, I can't. I can't talk about that here. It's it, it was it was punishment." And then she just sort of stops and sort of catches herself. And you see one of the butlers come over and just sort of like stand in between you and just she hands he hands her another glass, sorry, of the drink that she's having. And then just sort of like looks at her dead in the eyes and then just sort of slowly takes her glass away and just walks away again. So was that was that the head butler that did that or just no, another just, one? No, just one behind the bar. It's not the head butler. Um, he's off uh, serving. Well, he's getting the tables prepped for the first course for this evening. Okay, dokie. Um, um, I'll, I'll say, um, uh, I'm terribly sorry. I, I don't wish to pry. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you to your, your picture. Um, I'll uh, I'll mingle with a few other guests. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Enjoy your stay. And she just sort of goes back to drinking. Um, so we've got uh, Dolores or Edna. Are you are you mingling between yourselves or? Um, Edna would be would have head straight to the bar and <clears throat> and said. Wait, what time is it here? Are we have we come in the morning or? Uh, it's the, the evening, evening, so it's around five, five, six o'clock at night. Good evening, Mister Bartender. Could I perhaps have a a gin ricky, please? Uh, absolutely, sir. Sir, absolutely, ma'am. Um, are you? <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, sorry. My impression's not good enough for you. <laughs> uh, uh, he goes off to pour it, um, and he comes back, and he's uh, he's just like, "Forgive me if uh, if I've seen you somewhere before." And uh, as he's handing you the drink, oh, probably it's it's um, I'm I'm here and there. That my my face is. Kind of everywhere at the moment. It's it's okay. Um, I understand. Uh, have you have you been here before, ma'am? Yes, yes, I have. Ah, possibly from that then. And then he he just goes. Uh, Sir Richard will be down soon. Um, we we best get working on the soup. But uh, enjoy your drink. Um, and please enjoy the evening. Um, Thank you. And then at this point, um, the other. Uh, concierge comes in that took your bags up to your rooms and um, he just sort of like clears his throat and taps on a glass and he uh, just goes ladies and gentlemen um, please if you could be seated Sir Richard is coming down and we'll be with you shortly and uh, soup is about to be served so you can all gather around it's just a, a small table there's about six seven of you just around uh, this table so you, um, and there's two girls are still stood just next to the door um, and then the soup comes out there, uh, George uh, starts serving you all the soup, and he goes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, soup for this evening is pea. Um, I hope that's okay. Um, it was made here fresh today, and we have the best chef in the world out there. Um, and he just starts pouring this soup out for you all. Um, and then as he's doing that, the door to the dining room just uh, slowly opens. Um... The door to the dining room just slowly starts opening, and he um, goes, ladies and gentlemen, also, please welcome Sir Richard. And uh, Richard comes walking in, and he's, he's quite a... Uh, he's, he's aged a fair bit since you've last seen him. He's, um, he comes in, and he's quite heavy set. He's got a, a big grey beard, um, quite strong still. He, you can see that he's still got quite a lot of muscle on him. Um, he's got a cane, but he doesn't seem to be using the cane to help him walk. He's just he walks in, um, using it more of like, like, just like a pimp. Yeah, yeah, sort of like to display, and it's just it's got this nice big like sort of glass diamond short sort of shaped head to the to the cane, and he uh, he comes in, and he um, he waves to you all and smiles, and then he uh, heads up onto this uh, stage that he's got there. 
and um, he just sort of greets you all um, and he's just there like, my dear friends, thank you for joining me this evening. Um, it means a lot. Finally, we have this hotel open and ready to go. We've spent a lot of time, especially with the war, we got quite lucky. It turns out that it was missed by the bombers. And we slaved away here on most nights. Um, and the guests and hotel workers are people that have come back and have lost ones from the war themselves. You will meet my business partner later on. He is here. But for now, um, please welcome my two other guests. And he points to the two girls that are either side of him. And uh, the first one he sort of brings out and he goes, this is Edith. She's new here. She's been here for a few weeks. Um, and Edith's got like this jet black hair, sort of shoulder length. She's quite slim. She's uh, about, she looks mid twenties, early thirties. And um, she's sort of just, she sits there and she sort of like curtsies to you all. Um, and then she doesn't say much. And then she goes back in line. And then uh, Sir Richard just turns and goes, and this here is Hope. Um, she brought me Pierre, who you have already met uh, during the war. And he sort of gestures out, and it's um, she's got like blonde hair. It's quite far down her back. Again, it's tw she's about 26 as well. But she's got quite dark eyes, and she's looking down constantly, and she doesn't say anything this one. She just sort of like tentatively moves forward, and then slowly, like, curtsies to you and then slowly moves back into line so she's quite shy um he's like and then he um he turns he goes your rooms are now ready and as he's saying your rooms are ready um david comes in the other uh concierge that you've seen the no sorry pierre comes in david's already in uh pierre comes in and he goes um he just walks up to sir richard and he's just whispering to him um and you can you can overhear it. it's not important he just goes sir there is uh two newlyweds here um they they are looking for a room everywhere is sold out should we turn them away for the party this evening and he's like no um no no pierre let them stay um the room sorry is not what quite did pierre ready. say you cut out for a second uh he just sort of he said this to uh there's two newlyweds they are they are here looking for a room this evening um do we turn them away and uh he, so he's sir richard say, says no he, they can stay um so he sends them sends them off he's like we haven't got the we haven't got the the honeymoon suite is not ready yet but they can stay as long as they're happy in a different room and so pierre just goes off and uh signs them in again uh, they're gonna have all the checks done um and he goes uh, he turns to you and he goes for now i must take my leave friends but we shall see each other soon edith you could stay um but hope come along girl and he sort of like takes ushers her out of the, the room and she's quite timid walking behind and Edith just slowly comes down and sits, she joins you at the table and starts eating. Um so as you're doing that, um which one of you has got the least amount of luck? I've got fifty five. I've got more than that. Actually you're muted. Talk to you here. Uh, 65. And me. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, unfortunately for you, it's unlucky. Uh, you are going to need the toilet at this time. So you uh, excuse yourself from the table and you head out into the main lobby. And the toilet's just across the hallway to the other side. Um, so you head out there. And as you're in there, you hear... Um, in fact, can you do a, a listen? As you hear. Um, I absolutely can. Seven. Um, yeah, past that. Jesus, I you did pass that. This is sixty. Um. So seven. Yes. Yeah, so you. You hear it's um the two newlyweds are going upstairs and all of a sudden you hear sort of like a it's it's like a grating sort of sound. Um, unusual for the time and unusual for a hotel. Because um, you've obviously got your keys and it's just a, a normal... Are you cutting out again for some reason? Well, I don't know. I'll bring the microphone a bit closer. Um, so you hear sort of like grinding. Um, is that better? 
Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Right. Okay. okay I got the got the grinding bit though. So you hear it's unusual for the hotel, and um, there's because you've got the keys, and they're all sort of the bronze, old fashioned keys that you get. It's not. Um. So sorry. What's the what's the grinding like? Is it like it's actually like nails on a chalkboard, or is it like cane on no, wood? No, it's, it's like it's like, two, it's like gears churning and and metal. But there's no like clock. There's no nothing in the bathroom with you that can um make that sound. And then you just hear a distant thud. So you hear the grinding of the the two gears, and then just a thud that happens. And it's quite a a dull thud. There's no sort of scream with it or anything like that. It's just a a sharp thud that happens, and then silence. Just a, a silence for a bit, about about twenty odd seconds, and then you just hear this sort of like dragging, like almost like something dragging along wood that's just moving and it's all coming from the above you in the bathroom where you are um so you then uh you head back out and um you just see the two security guards that are still there still and uh you look so you probably looked you probably look quite sh- not shocked I'd say but you you probably visible that you can you've heard something a bit and, curious yeah and uh yeah. so they just look at you and go everything all right sir um as, as you come out um and you can tell sort of from looking at them that they've not been stood there the entire time they weren't there when you came out but now they're stood back in their position where they uh where they're guarding that door um so can you? Anyway, are the guards? Are the, are the? Was it the um, concierge that came and spoke to me, or the guards? Uh, when you came out of the bathroom. Yeah. The two security guards, but they weren't there when you came out originally to go to the bathroom. So they've just come back since the from the time you went in. Right. Okay. Um. So they've uh, they've sort of they they're checking you out. They sort of. They, I think they know that you've heard something, but they're not gonna, they're not gonna push you, and obviously you're looking quite concerned. But um, they, they also don't sort of re- mention anything to do with the sounds that you've just heard either. They just sort of almost ignore it um, and sort of gesture that you uh, hurry up back in um, into the. You're dining. gonna make me roll for something. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, you can do a do a spot hidden. Let's spot hidden on this. You'll probably nail it again. Yep. Yep. Okay. So you see, um, on the the biggest security guard out of the two, you just see, like his uniform slightly crinkled around the collars, where it was perfect when they were patting you down. Um, and you see what looks like, um, little droplets of blood are just around the collar. And obviously they weren't there a second ago. Um, and uh, they don't notice that you've seen this. They just sort of uh, let you gesture that you go back in uh, to join the party that's inside. Okay. So uh, we'll go through for that one. And then as the evening wears on, you uh, get served your, your mains. You know, you've got everyone sat around the table. Does anyone want to have any conversations while you sat around the table? I'm just trying to think. Who is the... The people next to me, are they wearing very nice things, or are they so, wearing average? So, you're probably sat... You'll be sat, and they'll probably have um, Mr. Richard's son's uh, betrothed wife, or, former, or widow. Um, she's probably sat next to you, and she's in quite an elegant dress but again she's quite covered up and then the other side of you you've probably got uh, Edith and she's in like a, a lace sort of black dress it's quite air uh, slimming as well okay uh, why did I have the feeling you were going to go can I pickpocket them or something like that <laughs> no I'm 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 not dodging <laughs> You're like, what are they wearing I want to steal them yeah <laughs> um so, yeah, uh, anyway, you get served the rest of your food, and then um, they go, uh, they'll, so, they'll be like, 
they'll come in again. It'll be uh, Pierre will just gesture and he goes, um, Madame, we will take you to your room. And he um, he points to um, he points to Dolores. And Dolores, uh, obviously, you, you can follow him, and um, takes you upstairs to your to your room that you've got. And he goes, uh, "This is uh, your room. It will have a nice view in the morning over central London. But um, for now, uh, we suggest that you get some rest and um, enjoy your stay at this uh, hotel." And That's why I just got taken from the party. Just to go to, they just. No, the the room the rooms are so that that and you settle into your room. You you can come back down. He says you can enjoy the hotel, but they want to set you in because they've got your bags still. So they've brought your bags up and put you in the room. Um, so you're not you're not being dragged away from the party. They're going to go back and they're going to start taking uh, some of your others, some of the others with them as well. So they take the colonel. Oh no, they leave the colonel. Sorry, they take um Sally. Oh, Isabel. Sorry, I'll I'll give you her name because I I keep going to say it. That's uh, Mr. Richard's son's wife, uh, former wife. Um, and they take her off as well. So there's you and her that have gone off um, just to settle in because their bags are getting quite a lot for the main lobby. Um, okay. Uh, so he takes you into your room and then as you uh, go, you turn the key in the lock. It's a uh, quite a nice fitting lock and you go in and the room's quite pitch black and there's a there's a light on the bedside table. It's like an oil lamp that you would have to light for a bit first. Um, and then there is one main master light, but the, the switch doesn't work when you flick it. So you go a bit further into the room um, and he holds the door open for you. Um, what? No, I'm telling him to turn on the light. Uh, Ma'am, please, uh, can you... I will hold the door um, just in case any guests need anything. <laughs> and he sort of finds no. that you go what? He works for this establishment, doesn't he? He can help me get settled in the room. He can go turn on the light. He knows where the matches are in the room. Come on now. Okay. Okay. Well, you, you gesture him. You you can you can have a little bit of an argument with him. And then he... Uh, so he goes in. Um, he's, he probably goes in now like, fucking women. <laughs> just, <laughs> 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 so he... Um, he he lights the the first uh, lamp for you, and then he goes over and flicks the switch, and the main light comes on as well. So you've got two lights in the room, and he goes, uh, "Now, please, uh, you can unpack and then rejoin the party downstairs. Um, there is much more to do this <laughs> evening." And um, as he as he goes, um, he shuts the door behind them so you can be settled in. But then, as he does, um, both the lights flick out. They shoot out. Um, so you're in now. You're in pitch black. Um, all of a sudden, um, and and uh, all of a sudden you hear like this raspy, this raspy voice just come through the door, the the wall. Sorry, and it's just like Dolores. I've what? I've always been watching you. And then um, all of a sudden you just hear like a faint scream. It's quite a. a deep scream in the room and uh, as you probably scramble over to try light this oil lamp again um, you can light it and reflected behind you is um, a figure and the figure has got a dagger in his hand and he's stabbing it into what looks like your husband so I think that's probably a sanity roll for you Um Okay, how do I do that? So you want to roll one D100 in the chat and then see what it is compared to your sanity. What the hell? So I just do slash roll? Yep, space one D100. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, well, you're going to take some sanity damage here. <laughs> okay. So... Um, <laughs> Is that count as a as a critical? I don't think you can on sanity rolls, can you? Okay, I'm, I'm not I, sure. I don't no, think you, know you can. Rules. I don't think you can on sanity rolls. Yeah. I think it's just That's a big man. Lovely. Just a question. So uh, you take you take two points of sanity damage. <laughs> okay. Okay. There you go. 
you should have. What do? Four. Where do I put the damage? Just, just take How two do I off. Put the take damage? two off your sanity. So your sanity should drop to forty-eight. Okay. Um, and then so you see this. He's, he's like carving marks onto, um, what looks like your husband. So you, I'm, I'm guessing you start to go into a bit of a panic here. You can. Yeah, I'm probably I'm probably freaking the fuck out. <laughs> I'm probably just silently frozen there. So you so you're frozen, you hear this the screams are obviously thing. He's not looking at you this uh, this man and your husband's not uh, looking at you at all either. He's just sort of well he's he's still screaming so he's still alive but he is just sort of lying on the bed and he's getting this uh, the knife just keeps carving away and you just hear these screams. So as you I'm guessing You'd probably be somewhere towards near the doorway now, and you look towards the door, and the door handle has disappeared. There is, there's no door handle on your door anymore. Okay, I'm just tripping. I must have just like passed out. I'm just asleep. <laughs> like this isn't real. <laughs> well, I've just collapsed on the floor, probably. Well, can you give me a spot hidden? But I'm going to need a hard success on this one. Mm -hmm. Like a half? Yeah. So half. how do I do this? So you still roll your D100. Fall of Cthulhu is pretty much all D100s for you, unless you're in oh. combat. I don't know what your spot hidden is. 45. 24 is not good enough. So you can, in this point, you can spend some luck, or you can push your roll. I want to... So what do either of those you, do? If you spend your luck, let me just make some changes to the stream as well while we do this. Um, if you push your roll, you can roll again. But if you can't spend luck on that and whatever result you get, you stick with. So if you fail again, something bad might happen. But you have to explain how you're going to do the thing that you're going to do harder or better. Or you can spend luck. So for every point that you need to get, which in this case is two, you have to spend one luck to get down that uh, so you just have to spend two luck here to get down. So we just have to spend two luck to succeed? Yep. Oh, then let's just do that. I have plenty of luck for now. Okay. So you can take two off your luck, and it will count as a success on that. Um, so let me just take some of this off while we're here, because I've realized that I've gone from the top to begin with, and now you can't see the... Um, That. You can't see what balls she's getting now. See that quickly and do that. So now you should definitely see what people are getting. There you go. Um, so you've succeeded in that. So you sort of you're panicking, but um, you're still you haven't gone insane. You've you've sort of you are freaked out. Um, and she. Um, so as you look around, you're scrambling to try and find this door handle now, and you just see a small vent just next to the door, and there's like little bits of almost steam um, coming out. Um, it's like it, it's it's not quite steam, but it's it's like a smoke is just coming out of this vent. Um, so you can. Does it smell like anything? There's there's no real smell. It's sort of a. There's no there's no smell to it, but you sort of think that that's probably what's causing what's going on. So you you sort of come to, you shake your head a bit and give yourself a bit of a slap, I think, at this point, um, after seeing this this smoke and you all of a sudden the, the door handle is back. Um so I'm guessing at this point you want to leave your room quite quickly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so so you leave your room and uh, as you open the door um, Pierre is still stood the other side. He's just heading down the hallway, and he's like, uh, "Ma'am, that was uh, very quick. Um, is everything okay?" Um, and he sort of looks at you. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know if I'd be able to talk about what just happened to me. I probably would just get straight to the bar. <laughs> tell myself. That nothing just happened. <laughs> <laughs> and this is clearly just, I don't know, just a trick of the light. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> a mimosa will fix this. <laughs> okay, that's, that's, okay, that's fine. So you can, 
you, you go to head down the bar and Pierre sort of just follows you down, um, looking a bit more intrigued. So um, we we get down and you go straight back to the bar. So what does what's Charles and Edna doing at this point? Um, so I've been at, uh, well, I've been ushered back to the dining room, right? Yeah, so you've been sent back in by the security that you've seen have got a bit of blood on them. Um, I would, I'd probably keep that to myself for now until, until any other weird events occur. Um, I'd just probably be making small talk with, with other guests or, or yeah, I'll do that for now. Okay. Um, anyone in particular you want to talk to? Um, no, not not particularly. Sort of same thing that I was doing with um, Isabel. Is just like going around. How how are you enjoying the evening? It was nice food. Um, how long have you known Sir Richard? Such, such and such. Fair enough. Um, Edna, are you doing similar? Edna would probably um, if <clears throat> she was allowed, would be just um side hugging the the crying lady and okay, thinking yeah. to herself fucking hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> that that's fine um so at this point um i think dolores uh you're on your way back to the to the bar with pierre and um you you haven't quite made it yet, and you keep going down this corridor with the way that you think you came, and um, you turn right at the end of the corridor like you think you're going to go, and there's just a wall. It's just a wall there where the stairs used to be. Is, P- is Pierre still there? Yeah, Pierre's just behind you. Okay. Oh what the hell is <laughs> like, going can on? Can you lead the way to the bar? I'm just going to ask him, because clearly I don't fucking know where I'm going. Um. Okay, so Pierre sort of just like looks at you and just goes, uh, "Ma'am, are you sure you're all right? the The bar is this way, the way we the way we came in." And he gestures, and you turn around, and the stairs that weren't there a minute ago are there. Um, there's there's just a, a normal staircase leading down straight down into the the main lobby. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just gaslighting myself. They were there the whole time. I must have just, I must have just looked in the wrong direction. Damn, so he sort of, he sort of looks at you like, "Are you sure you're all right, ma'am? Did you have uh, maybe one too I many probably drinks at the bar?" I look probably pretty freaked out right now. <laughs> like I am just, like the gears are turning. <laughs> but nothing's there. Nothing's lining up. So yeah, yeah. So you've you've um you basically get pointed back to the back down the stairs, and he's he he's going to keep an eye on you. But he's um he goes back behind the lobby, the the desk first, and he just sort of starts scribbling notes on this uh this pad, while every now and then just looking up at you as the two security guards sort of just um gesture that you go back in to the to the main lobby or to the does, main dining um, hall. Does Dolores look a little bit um uneasy when she returns to the bar? I feel like my hair probably looks a little a little bit more frazzled. Uh and my eyes are probably wider. Okay. Um well if if I I'm allowed to look, notice this, um I'll uh, I'll approach Dolores since I've made my about a small talk with everyone. Yeah, no, I think that's pretty noticeable. She'd be pretty freaked out at the minute. So yeah, you can you can go off and have your conversation. Um, are, are you okay, madam? I, I can't help but notice that since you've returned from your room, you are looking a little bit um, startled. Um, is everything all right? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Everything's fine. I'm I'm probably just a little uh frazzled from the trip here and uh yep. Didn't much care for my room. I'm sure I'll be fine. I'll just use it for sleeping. Um just gonna have a drink. <laughs> you didn't you didn't happen to see or hear anything unusual, did you? 
Uh, <laughs> just uh... I'm gonna probably pretty poorly lie. <laughs> Be like, nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. Nothing like that. <laughs> are you are you act are you actually poorly lying or are you trying to hide it? That that's probably how I said it. If you believe it, then you believe it. If you don't, you don't. I think um while you're having this conversation, um again, it, this is just something that's in uh Dolores' head. It's it's not gonna be something that Charles hears. Um but you just hear that same sort of raspy voice that just goes, Tell them nothing and sort of like keeps that sort of In my head I'm gonna think I never intended to <laughs> <laughs> Then you can carry, can, carry. I like, can I do like a like a psychology role perhaps to yeah. try and like yeah you can do a psychology see, role like what's going on yep oh Ooh. bollocks do you want to uh, nah, that do you want to push your luck <laughs> push nah, your I'm luck. Right. you're just gonna I'm right. just, she's probably just had too much to drink yeah so you you probably think that she is just a bit a bit tipsy she's uh she's nervous she's shaking she doesn't she doesn't perhaps know you that well um so or anyone here. Um, she's sort of kept herself to herself to begin with. She might be missing home, um, so you don't you don't really realise that anything's going on. Um, okay, no. well in that case, I'll uh, I'll grab I'll grab one of the um, the the a bartender to to make sure she gets another drink, ease herself in a little bit more. Yeah, uh, are you going to give her another alcoholic drink, thinking that she's drunk, or are you going to say just water this time? <laughs> Um, she hasn't had anything to drink yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably an alcoholic one to like, I don't know, ease into the night a bit more. Okay, yeah. So uh, he, he can bring that drink over. Um, the next. Uh, okay. Um, how will we do? This? We will do a. I don't want to do. Look again, cause I... Let's have um, Dolores, uh, not Dolores, Edna. You're with um, Sally. You've got your arm around her still. Um, yep. And wait, that way, Sally or Isabel? Isabel, sorry. I don't know. If, ignore me, Isabel. Um, Isabel. Uh, and Isabel sort of sobbing still, and uh, she's sort of like, "Forgive me, I'm." I'm being a bit of a, a a downer tonight, but do you mind taking me back to my my room? Um, and sort of looks at you. Oh, of course, it it's no worries, darling. I've been there myself. <clears throat> okay, um, let's get you to bed. So, you pair have left the uh, the dining room, and um, you're heading up the stairs, and. Again, um, the hallways have got this like green paper with a wooden sort of frame on the back, and there's quite a lot of beams going across the ceiling and down the walls as well for structural support. It's a lot different looking upstairs than it is in the grand dining room that you were just in. And uh, as you turn the corner, um, you see a, a it's a young a young man um, is in the corridor, but he's sort of shaken and um, crouched, just hiding with his head in his hands, and he's uh, mumbling under his breath. So I'll, I'll let you see what you do with that. Um, darling, are you sure your room's this way? Or would you... Do you know if there's a different passage we can go? Um, he looks a bit... Hmm. Yes, it's it's just down there. It's next to where, next to where that man is. But I've, I've never uh, seen him before. Um, okay, well, <clears throat> I'm sure he's just had a bit too much, too a little tipsy. I'm sure if we can just walk past him, it'll be fine. Okay, so, uh, so you go to go to walk past him, um, and can you do a? Listen roll for me, I think. This Absolutely. Fuck. <laughs> uh, 
You gonna? I don't hear shit. No. You not? not do... No, I have to get down to fifty. I I ain't doing nothing. You can push your roll. You can try again, but then. She's not. She's not overly interested. Okay. Well, as you're walking past, you hear you hear sort of faint mumblings that um. He just left left his right, left left, left his right. Left is right, so he keeps keeps just saying it over and over again, and then holding his head, and uh, you just walk past. This he doesn't he doesn't reach out, he doesn't grab you or anything like that. He's just sort of he's mm. he's in a a panic, sort of sat there, um, and so you can get to uh, Isabel's room, and you can let her go inside for the night. And uh, as you as you turn around, the the man in the corner's just gone. He's uh, he's not sat there. So are you gonna? That's not creepy at all. Are you gonna head around the hotel? Um, I wouldn't say it's uh, I wouldn't say it's sort of sanity inducing. I'd say it's just a bit. No, off. it's just yeah, it's just it's just a bit off. A bit eerie. Yeah. Um. Is so that the uh, <clears throat> has it just been the starter that's come out? Uh, or... No, I'd say by this time you've sort of had your meal. It's just there's not much going to okay. happen in the in the main hall. So, um, right. I think it's now just a party thing down there. You've had your main course. You've had your your soup and a dessert. Um, back when he did the speech, did um Mister, forgot his name, Mister uh, Richards, Richards, yes. <clears throat> Did Mr. Richards go anywhere or has he is he with us in the hall? No, or? he he left. He he left. He took off. He's um well, you probably think he's in his office at this point. He said he'd, he'd see us mm. all later. Um okay. Yeah, then I think I'd he'd probably uh notify a member of staff and then head towards the office. Preferably George. So when you say you're I notifying a George member of before. staff is in to what you've seen, or just that you're going to go look for? I'm going to go look for the office. Okay. Um, George, sort of, yeah, he's sort of like, uh, abs- absolutely, ma'am. Um, I'm sure he looks forward to seeing you and uh, gestures you gestures you in the right direction for the office. Um, and as you're sort of approaching the office, the uh, the same bare man that you've seen that's sort of shaken just grabs you in as you turn a corner and he's just like screaming um screaming sort of up, up, up is down left is right, left is right gotta get out gotta get out uh, can't can't get out and he's sort of like shaking um and then you just hear from the background uh david just comes out and he's just like uh sorry sorry ma'am um and he just sort of grabs this guy and just there uh, he goes he just sort of like takes him away with the security guards, and he goes, um, "So, so frightfully sorry about that. Um, he's been, he's here, bless him, for one night. Then he's being taken to the asylum tomorrow. Um, please uh, carry on, um, and just sort of like leaves you, um, leaves you with that." Okay, so I'm gonna check do? my arms. So you check your arms. Yeah, 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 yeah. just where he grabbed me, really. <clears throat> yeah, I don't. I don't think he would have done any damage. He's not. It wasn't like he's not a strong guy. You can see him. He's got like limb, like sort of really skinny arms. Like I'm he's a frail old like... lady. Yeah, I, I suppose you could maybe have like maybe a few bruises starting to show up, but it's not. It wasn't a tight grip. He's he's more trying to okay. grab your clothes to just sort of like yeah. shake you. He, it was he's not. He Fair wasn't enough. aggressive in any way. Um, mm. but they they take him off. Um, so then what... still, sorry. No, yeah. carry on, carry on. Okay, well, she, I was just going to say that she'd still, like, um, just pat herself where... Yeah. <clears throat> ...to get, you know, whatever grime he's got off of. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, do you carry on your way towards the, the yes. office? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, the office is quite clearly marked. It's um, quite a nice, big, grand... He's got a big oak desk in the middle of it. Um, and he is just sat behind his desk, and you can hear him sort of mumbling away as he comes in and he uh he looks up and sees her and just goes Ah, Edna, my old friend. Please do come in. Sort of gestures that you can come in. Hello, darling. I was just um 
I I noticed you. You've been you, your speech was wonderful as always, but um, you seemed a bit down. So I just thought I'd uh, come and see see how how you are. Uh, no, thank you for your concern. Um, I am fine. I have. This place has just really taken it out of me, and obviously, I would have hoped that my son would be here this evening to to bring course, home this new hotel. But alas, I had to just quickly nip off uh, business chats and all that, you know. Um, hmm. Hopefully, the partner will see him soon. And the uh, goes back. He's got um, a few books and stuff on his desk. They're all tower, and he's making this like a little journal that he's writing in. Um, but there's no, the room's sort of covered in photos of his wife and of his son um, yeah. and other photos of the hotel. And then uh, there's sort of like these almost like charts on the wall behind. Um, I don't think. Did you do a history? Have history? Probably not. Did you? Um, well, I can still do it. Yeah, you can still do it. It's going to be difficult for you. Yeah, you can do a history roll. Fuck. You... That was so close. I, I didn't. I didn't. Actually, <clears throat> I'm going to spend a luck on that. Yeah. How much luck is it per point? Uh, so one for one. One for one? Yep. Fine. Okay, I'll do it just because it was so close. So you've gone down three gone points. Down okay, so yeah, you've gone down to five. So you can, you sort of see that it's uh, charts of an old area of London, but then, so it's clearly where the hotel is, except you've got um, the houses next door and everything like that. There seems to be a lot more on the charts than there are to the hotel, because the hotel's quite narrow but tall. And these charts have sort of got this big sort of acres of land all around it. Um, and it looks like there's markings all over them, and you can see from some of them that some of them go under the Thames, and some of them lead to certain other parts of London, like little marks that are dotted all around the central part of Whitehall. Um, and it's all stuff from before, obviously, the war that had been in. Mm. But it looks like, at the top, it looks like it's almost like land that has been purchased by Mr. Richards, so you can see that he owns a lot more than just this hotel. Wow, is this <clears throat> is this all yours? Uh, he I'm looks into it. Yeah, he he sort of looks and sort of like double takes, like he he wasn't he wasn't there. He didn't realize they were sort of there and out and on display. And he goes, "Oh, um, yes, I uh, I bought this uh, a long time ago, and you know how it is with the war. Land got cheaper, and a lot of it got sadly flattened for me, but." Um, that's where Hope came along. You remember her from the, the lobby, don't you? Yes, um, I do. Um, and he sort of like gestures and just goes, yes, um, Hope. And he sort of points and it's like a photo of her from back when, and you can see this rubble all around the hotel, apart from where the hotel is standing. And he's like, um, I found her here on this place of land. And everywhere around it was destroyed apart from this. And this is where I thought it's where I'd built this hotel. She also brought Pierre to me. And David. We called her Hope because she can't speak. And, um, he sort of... Uh, he, he looks sort of longingly at this photo and sort of like just stares at it and goes, How I owe her everything. And then sort of like... Um, Trips back off and he goes, but anyway, the land. Um, yes, all the way down to the Thames and there's a lot more to this place than meets the eye. Oh, sounds like a mystery. Uh, and then it was, uh, anyway, um, I've got this, uh, I've got this business meeting to come up soon. Yes, of um, course. Yes. So I'm just... Please uh, excuse me if I have to get back to my work. Uh, no worries. No en worries. Enjoy I the party. I just wanted to make sure you're okay. Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for visiting. So um, he sort of like 
not rudely, but sort of like gestures to the door yeah. um, that he wants this meeting to happen first. So uh, it's almost like you're you getting them um, sent out. Um, yeah. So Prince still doesn't want me anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um. So as you uh, you leave, you going down this corridor. Is um. Could you? Oh. Let me do a. I think a listen roll. A listen roll. I'm not very good at that. <laughs> I'm old. Yeah, I've I'm got fine. no ears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is I'll take that that's not quite a half but I'll take it okay so um, similar to stuff before you had um, you hear these gears and stuff gr like uh, grinding again that are in the mm. uh, almost from behind the walls and stuff like that but there's there's no there's again there's no clocks there's no mechanical work here that should be making that sound um, and then again you Almost here, you hear a. It's it's definitely a door. Um, you can hear it squeaking and then just shut. Um, and it's not the office behind you. It's somewhere further up the room. Um, followed by this sort of like quick sort of scampering. So you can hear feet, but there's no one around you. So you can you can definitely hear that there's someone running somewhere near you, but you can't see them. Um, and then. So you can you can carry on your way. Uh, you can turn the corner and you can see that there down the the corridor there is a few doors um, everywhere, and they've all got numbers for like hotel rooms apart from one on the other side. Uh, so then it's up to you what you do here. You can ignore them, or you can go um, you can go to the door that you just heard. I. Against my better judgment, I believe that <clears throat> curiosity is what makes us human. So, you're gonna... so that unmarked door sounds like a lovely place to investigate. Okay, so you um, you go to the this door and um, you just reach out, you jiggle the handle a bit, and it's it's open. Um, there's nothing. There's nothing there. Um, and then you slowly open the door, and as you do, it pulls out towards you into the heart, uh, the corridor. Mm. And as you do, there is a body of the man that you just seen that's shaken just falls out on top of you. You see a bang! And there's a hole just appears in Pierre's chest. But then as he turns out his pockets... Two shells just fall out from a pistol, just like drop onto the floor. Oh, 